This is E, the non-algorithmic name. Thank you for joining me for another collectible critique and in my internal quest for bankruptcy. Enjoy! Thank you for joining me on this latest review for the District 9 exosuit made by Wita or Weta, however you want to pronounce it. A uh, quick thing, thanks for your patience. It's been a long time, I know. Uh, stuff in the way, stuff's out the way now. I've been getting 30 subscribers in the last two days, which is absolutely shocking. It just spiked overnight, and people have been actually requesting to get a review of this exosuit, so I figure better do it properly. First thing that needs to be clarified is that I didn't actually pay any imports or duty taxes on this product, which means I can say, you know, two for two, Wita does not charge duty on their products, which is absolutely amazing for collectors worldwide, because it takes away the whole worry of having to ship things. They also have two factories or two distribution outlets in, as far as I'm aware, in the United Kingdom and in Australia, which means they can actually deliver all over the world at a relatively effective cost in a good time. As far as I know, they could have one in the United States, but I'm not sure. Also, I'd just like to say quickly that as far as legendary scale sideshow collectible statues go, I have received nothing but negative critique from everyone who has ever purchased one, which means that it's safe to say, I mean, the data is consistent, as we say, it's been repeated and repeated and it's always the same result, sideshow legendary statues are not worth the money. All of them that have come out so far have been given complete negative criticisms from virtually everyone. I have never seen a, a positive review. Uh, I've, I've said it a lot of times commenting, but as far as uh, loyalty to a company is, it's very good to have loyalty to a company and a distributor, but if that distributor has no respect for the collectors, they don't deserve your loyalty. That's how it works. It's a two-way street. They need our money, we need their products. <laughs> now, on with the review. District 9 Exosuit. Absolutely wonderful. I don't do this, but I have to. They give you eight of these in the box, which it just keeps this so safe. No dents on the surface of the box. Absolutely none. Very safe. No problem. What else? On the top? Okay. Let's do this. You'll notice, of course, you've got a detailed explanation of the Exosuit. Da -da -da, some pictures main picture and of course you've got the other products that are available from Weta, Weta. I like saying Weta. You get a very nice yeah, underneath it's got all the legitimate pieces you need not really anything else. You've got your number which is nice and the top is also very lovely. Quick point if anyone is wondering about purchasing objects brand new or second hand the most important thing to note here is if you are getting a brand new exosuit this piece will still be here, because once it's open, it just falls out, which means there'll be a small gap here, allowing you to open the box neatly and cleanly. Uh, be in mind, I'm sure there's some people who will be able to open it without that, but just in case you wanted to know, on with the meat. Alright, nibbles aside, here comes the juicy meat of the actual box, which is absolutely fabulous. It's been quite a while since my unboxing, but my enthusiasm has not faded on this epic piece from... Oh, just can't get over it. What do you get? If you know you need clear clarify. This is a very lovely arm. Why? Because these guns are directly from the District 9 movie. This is actually, well, let me get it right, this is the assault rifle, and this is the arc, uh, yeah, the arc cannon. Absolutely lovely, it looks exactly like the full-sized, yeah, versions which you can buy, or the mini versions, whichever you prefer. They really spared no detail on the sculpting, which is, I think, just marvelous. You get all sorts of little, you know, tidbits here and there, bolts for the arm wires, and in case it hasn't been mentioned on the other arm, there's a few, you know, rubber pieces, which is awesome. You get the hydraulic, you get the hydraulics, you get the, yeah, pistons, you everything you'd ever want to see on a mech is here. Even the rocket pod, which, I'll admit, it, it's, it looks a little bit lazy on the rocket pod, but I can't complain. That's the highest. It blends. Now, the left arm, as well, embodies a full-sized gravity... I believe this was the gravity gun used by the mech. Utility, doesn't matter about the history of this machine, just look at that detail. 
compared to the weapons on the other arm, the size of this weapon is huge, which means it probably belonged to the mech. Never mind. Here's the rubber. Look at that. Look at that. They actually put in rubber. I thought that was so cool. I'm sorry to be jazz. I know Sideshow does those things, but you know, like it really fits. It's so naturally blended. It's something you don't look at as in an odd way, thinking like, oh, but does it really belong there? You don't think that because it fits. What else? Yeah, you get little iron rods here to, you know, attach to the center of it. I'm getting to it. I'm getting to it. What else do you get? These two little wings. I have no clue what they did in the movie. Still don't. Radar. Then you get these three little antennas which fit very neatly. Yeah. Nothing much to say about them. They've been nicely painted. It's not exactly going to be very complicated to do the design on these things. They look very simple, but the sum of the whole is greater than its parts. Now, the body. <laughs> It looks and feels like a tank. I know feel sounds a bit complicated, but bear with me here. Why I say it feels like a tank is because of all these little sections and segments you get on it, which give it the idea that it's been, you know, armor plated and everything. Things I found absolutely outstanding was the detail. They even put detail underneath to go through that kind of it. They could have ignored it, but they left a little bit, which is nice. The details in the back here, the spine area, very nice. Again, more of the hydraulics, more of the rubber. <laughs> and these little spikes, which, uh, if I'm not mistaken, were locking mechanisms when the mech was, you know, being unloaded, loaded, whatever, it doesn't matter. The face, I have to say, is quite nice. The face has been done, wow, face, view, whatever you want to call it, it looks great. And just the whole feeling of it, you know, it's not that large compared to the legendary, but pff, screw the legendary. This honestly looks just marvelous. Even with the skinny upper legs here, it just has that whole plate armor feel behind it. Behind the, everything has been done. Every little detail has been captured as it should be. Now, let's get on with assembly quickly, because, uh, let's face it, this isn't going to be that complicated. <laughs> the base itself is a very simple base, but it just proves that the actual beauty of the piece is in the quality, because if you look at the base, fine, it doesn't look like much, but if you watch District 9 in close detail as I did and you know as much, then you'll just see these tiny grains are like, the surface, the texture of it feels very on targets with the actual movie, which is just wonderful. Even the footprints went with that kind of a detail. Um, yeah, what else? You got simple District 9 Exo suits, 301 R600, classic for a good quality piece. Got your little rubber protectors here. Rubber. Assembler. I don't know what this piece here does. I still don't, but it doesn't matter. I guess it's to show a front, so this angle is the optimum angle in which to display your piece. Probably even add a nice little card there saying District 9. Never mind. Assembly! Of course we have to get the main one first. Now, I should note that in the beginning, the legs didn't quite fit so neatly into the holes. But, after time, they did eventually sink in, which was pretty good. Which means give it some time and it will actually fall into the correct positioning, which is nice. Doesn't mean it will collapse, but you know, it's it's good. Um, arms, yeah. Arms are very simple to connect. Just start with the right one. Very easy. They do sit in very loosely though, so I don't recommend carrying this piece. I don't recommend carrying this piece if you're actually, you know, having it fully assembled because a slight rock to the left or right and you will lose an arm. Now these are very, uh, so not the wings, we'll do the wings later. The antennae are very simple to attach because the bases are all constructed in such a manner that they will only fit in one specific hole and in a specific direction. And it's over here. It's right there, it's right there. Yeah, I know it's right there, but I can't see it. All right. There we go. Even the circular piece has to fit in a specific way. The wings, uh, no real difference with left and right. 
believe. Nope. Experiment concluded. There is absolutely no difference with left and right wing, except it looks great. And there you have it. That's assembly. That's it. It's so simple, but the final product is phenomenal. And the wiring over here, it's it just could have been colored to, to emphasize it, but to me it doesn't look like it's off the actual, you know, prototype or it's off from the model from what I can see as a prototype. Oh, no, it's green on the prototype as well, so it looks exactly like the prototype photo, if that's a prototype. You get my point. I'm sick of saying that word. All the little details are there, and I just had to add this because it has been sitting in a dusty area for a while. Construction, you know, goes on. Never mind. Something which should be noted is if dust falls on this piece, it adds to the effect. How many statues can say that? Because this is from a dirty slum area for, you know, aliens and movie plot. Very dusty area, very arid climate, and the whole dust building up on top of this mech is just perfect. It, it goes with it. The claws are rubber, I forgot to mention that. They don't twist or turn, so you know, don't overdo it or you will break it and then you'll cry. You get the same for the little tongue there. La, 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 la. I have to be honest because as far as nitpicking goes, I can find some things, but they are totally negligible. This to me is a real collector's piece for one and only one reason. The fact that it, as you look at it, there's just more and more and more for you to drink in and gnash on. And, it's just every last detail you won't see. You will not see it in the first day, month, maybe year if you're an observant, but every little thing just keeps adding to it. There is so much detail. I don't care if they did this with a plaster cast, if they had some poor unfortunate Chinese worker, you know, chiseling at it for a few months, but whatever they did, thank you. Whoever did this one, well done. The beauty is in the simplicity, because if you think about it, it's just one big green lump, basically. And then they added a few little details, you know, scuff marks from battle, from use, from classic things, little orange paint schemes here and there. Uh, what else? Yeah, the detail in the guns, the hydraulics, the joints, the pistons, even the little... There's, okay, in the back you'll see there's a sort of like turbine generator which explains why it could jump so high. I never knew that until I saw this, then the explanation came. There's a nice vent at the back of this piece here, you'll see when it comes around. The alien logos just sitting all over it. The tank hatches. I could go on and on and on and just that is how good this piece is. Why, oh why, do companies like Sideshow with their legendary turds get more publicity than pieces like this that deserve true, true collectors to have them? I hope I've said that correctly because I, my mind is so frazzled right now just looking at this. That is how nice it is. I look at this thing and it just gives me a smile. Every... I don't even know if you'll be able to see this, but you see that little hinge? That little hinge there, right there on the wing. They didn't need to do that. I wouldn't have noticed it. I don't think anyone would have noticed it, but they did it. That's the commitment that they have to their products. They're not a big company like Sideshow, which explains, you know, they can pace themselves, perform their work better, but as far as this goes, it is great. I... words are not enough. I, I feel like that I won't, but I feel like dancing. I probably will dance when I'm done making it. It's great, this piece. And I know... I know, it just sounds like I'm, I'm being a fanboy for Weta, but trust me, I'm not. Sideshow have done remarkable things in the past. Lately, I've heard nothing good from them, and that's their fault. Weta, Weta, whichever, they've done also some good things and some bad things. But this piece is a good thing, a really good thing. So, in your collection, will this stand out? Depends on the color scheme. If you have a lot of, like, military things lying around, it will, you know, blend in. However, it's a giant walking tank. So, hmm, it would stand out quite a lot. I'm already going to give this a pop factor of already, like, 9 out of 10. Why would I take off the 1, would you ask? I'm trying to figure that out. I can't, I can't think of a reason. So, if I can't think of a reason, logically, it must be 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10? Yep, maybe the drab color scheme? Nope, 10 out of 10. Pop factor, 10 out of 10. This piece, 10 out of 10. 
actually I'd say like 9.5 out of 10 because you know I really wish they would have gone over these upper wires and lines and little circuit boards and just painted them. If by any chance anyone from Weta, Weta does watch this, thank you! And I mustn't forget to mention of course Mr. Greg Broadmoor. I hope I'm saying that right. Dude, you had to be smoking some serious mechanical weed to be coming up with this design. Thank you for pushing and thank you for getting it into my home. This is truly going to stay with me for a long time. What I'm going to do with the other two, I felt like displaying them, but that might reduce the value. I don't know. It seems to me these pieces are going at a very slow rate. They're not selling quickly. Why? Because we're investing our money in some. Final words here. It's a great piece. If you can get it, and of course, you know, you're a fan of these mechanical machines, then get it. If you like, you know, sleek, sexy women, this is nowhere near towards your appeal. I would have to say one negative thing about it. One negative thing is that the legs look so weird when it becomes like in, in profile, very skinny. Like, how can they support this massive tank? But, you know, they do. So otherwise, you turn on its side, just like the just like the angle advisor, I'm going to call it, says, and you've just got a beautiful piece in your collection. I'm sure there are plenty of robotic tank statues, but none to this kind of detail. Yeah, it's not very big, but trust me, size has nothing to do with this piece. I think the size is perfect. If they made it any bigger, the details would have blurred out and become a little bit less uh, outstanding. The detail is magnificent. So, I'm glad to say I'm back on the collecting market. However, I'm going to be a lot more discerning with my choices. I really do hope this video has been helpful. I know it sounds like I've been giving this thing nothing but praise, but honestly speaking, I would not fault it for anything. It is a great piece. It is beautifully detailed. The shadowing is done excellently. If you get the lighting correct, it's marvelous. And if it gets dusty, it just looks better. For all the feedback I've been getting, I really am enjoying all the inputs in the conversation that's been going. It's, it's good. It's helpful to other people. That I'll say thank you very much for watching. Enjoy your quest for bankruptcy. I totally am. <laughs>